another LinkedIn post. Um, so this is from, uh, and I'm probably going to mess up his last name, but Liren Hirschkorn. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so Amazon Liren. introduced a, a new beta sponsored display lead gen ads. So essentially what they're trying to do, um, and I thought this was interesting, but they're trying to compete more with Facebook and Google uh, because according to this graphic that he posted, Amazon in the last quarter, yeah, last quarter of 2023 had 48 billion in ad sales. Facebook had 39 billion. Amazon only had 15 billion and then YouTube had 9 billion. And what he's talking about is that the main reason Amazon isn't bigger is because they are solely focused on people selling on their platform, um, other than maybe you know Amazon TV ads. Uh, but this is kind of a, what I see is more of a shot at maybe Facebook, where you know you see all those Facebook ads and you click on the ad and then it pops up a form to collect information. Um, so, what are you guys' thoughts on this? So why don't we start with? Kevin, this time, uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, Amazon trying to take some market space from Facebook and Google? Yeah, I think it's just kind of a natural evolution because if you think about it, starting out, it was all sponsored product ads, and then they added the sponsored brands, and basically everything was kind of going up funnel, and then eventually, you know, you have DSP, and so it's really trying to get more and more people to buy things for products on their on their platform. And you think about it, like when you go to page one, everything is an ad. Well, not everything, but like a good chunk of it is an ad, whereas not that long ago, it was like one or two listings would be sponsored on page one of the uh, uh, search results page. And so I think they've gone, they, they've put as much inventory they can put on, you know, placements on, you know, product detail pages and search results. They are going more and more up funnel. So I think they're running out of places that they can, you know, dig into the pockets of their advertisers to sell physical products. So now you got to go other ways. And so some of that is non-physical products. So in this case, he's talking about, you know, lead gen ads. And funny thing was just this morning, I got an ad on my LinkedIn profile for their lead gen product. And I think those lead gen products where the form is on the, um, the, it, it stays on platform, so to speak, like meaning you're not trying to cookie people and, you know, use like a Facebook pixel or something like that to, to get the uh, conversion data. Because ever since a couple of years ago with the iOS, I think it was 14 update, all these advertisers don't have as much data to know how well ads are converting. And so lead gen, if it all stays within their platform, they know because it's first party data. Okay, this person you know clicked on the ad, they submitted their information, so they know. So this is one way to kind of dip their toes in without having to worry too much about figuring out all the data that Facebook was trying to figure out you know, to get ads. So this is kind of a way to get non-product ads um, because companies are always looking for leads. You know, uh, everybody on here is looking for leads at some point, you know, for, you know, business. All businesses are looking for leads. So I think it's a smart play on Amazon's uh, play to try this. Although I don't know that most sellers would benefit necessarily. So even if you get an ad saying, hey, or an email saying, test this out, I would caution most sellers, unless you're selling really high price products to dip your toes in that water. Yeah, I think the the mindset of people on Amazon is a lot different than the mindset of people on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, to an extent, Google. Um, because when you're on those platforms, you're more looking for entertainment, basically kind of wasting time and you see an ad that interests you, then I think maybe you're more likely to do that. But when you're on Amazon, you usually already know what you're looking for uh, and what you want to buy for the most part. So it might be a little bit of a different mindset in the traffic that's coming there. Well, I also would imagine these are probably more on their off-platform ads. So they've probably developed an inventory of impressions that they could sell to people. And so... There's probably only so many people that want to go up funnel and spend so much money on off-platform ads to get people onto Amazon. So, you know, if you're on CNN or Fox News or whatever, and Amazon has, you know, placements, they're probably not selling all those placements that they have available, or they want to get more demand so that they could raise the price in whatever auction that is for, you know, CPMs or whatever. 
So I would imagine that's probably where they're going because yeah, I would agree with you. Like if you're on Amazon, you're looking for products. You're not looking to, you know, uh, you're not looking for a mechanic or, you know, uh, whatever lead gen product the advertiser. Yep. Yeah, that's true. You're probably correct on that. Probably more off of Amazon ads than in the actual Amazon.com platform. Uh, Leslie, what do you think? Okay, let's bring this down to the average seller or even someone with a really great brand. Um, and don't do it, y'all. This is just Amazon sucking more of your profitability away. Uh, if you have a really big brand and you're competing against other really big brands, yes, you need to do things to build your really big brand and to make sure you're top of mind and not selling your product, but just building brand awareness. But if you're the average Amazon seller, you need to kill it on awareness and ads for your specific products because that's how people search on Amazon. And most of this, most of the people who buy your products search for it on Amazon. Some comes from it off Amazon, but most of it is on Amazon. So I think this is one more thing where it could get really tempting for smaller, mid-sized sellers, decent sellers to say, you know, I'm going to test this out. I'm going to dump some money in there. And all of a sudden, you're just totally negative on your profitability. Um, Amazon makes everything seem really sexy so that you'll want to buy it. I mean, later we're going to talk about AGL. You know, uh, do global logistics with us. It'll be great until we don't have capacity and we jack the prices up and don't take responsibility for our failures. And I'm sure that the advertising would be the same thing. So just my two cents. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely something to that. I think the interesting thing here, though, is that they are allowing, you know, they're they're always very hard on that there are customers and you can only communicate with them through us. But now they're opening that maybe a little bit where you can collect the information from their customers and contact them directly. So that's the only benefit, I guess, I could see. But yeah, you're definitely right that they keep trying to get more and more and more ad dollars from everybody for sure. Yeah. And, and I really think this is targeting, not physical product sellers. I think they're going after a completely different market. Now they'll probably try to, you know, uh, sell it to us as sellers, but they will. And yeah. It, it says non endemic brands, meaning not physical product brands that this is really more targeted for, but I have a feeling they will, they'll, they'll, they'll try to see if they can sell it to us. Yeah, and, and Liren does say in the, his post that uh, to catch up, Amazon needs to reach beyond e-commerce brands. So that mm -hmm. might be where you're correct, where they're trying to go with this. Get the bigger brands that are spending lots of money on Facebook and ads or even non-e-commerce brands that aren't advertising on Amazon at all and get some of their ad dollars. Yeah, I mean, this is probably targeting, you know, State Farm and Blue Cross Blue Shield and, you know, uh, lawyers. Yep. Yep. For sure. Rachel, what do you think? First, I just love the way that you said lawyers. <laughs> That's <laughs> also how I say that. <laughs> I uh, most but... lawyers would say it that way too. <laughs> yeah. Most lawyers, honest lawyers dad. would agree, I think. Yep. Yeah. They, they agree as well. Um, so the, the first thing that I was thinking was the type of brand you are does matter. So I did work with a client who was selling products up to about $1,000. And so for those ones where you've got a pretty high price point, sometimes your customers do have pretty detailed questions or maybe interested in asking for information from multiple brands before making that buying decision. Yep. We found out from our ads exec that the buying timeline from beginning to end of the, of the purchasing process was close to four months. Um, and so they're really researching, they're really looking at this, they're really thinking about it before they buy. And so something like a lead gen ad could potentially work for that kind of company. For most products, it's not it's not going to make sense. Um, but I actually went a different way with this. I was just thinking about the product managers and the advertising team who are like, how do we get promoted? Let's come up with a new thing so we can get promoted. <laughs> how do we make more money? Yeah. Increase our bonus size. Absolutely. All right. Very good. Well, and even they even redefined who they're competing against. That was what I thought was most interesting about this. If, in fact, internally at Amazon, they're saying, we're not getting as much as Facebook. Uh, they're completely redefining who their competition is in ad spend, if that is, in fact, their thinking. 
instead of how can we make more money off of these suckers? I'm sorry, all of these sellers uh, that they think are suckers and with all of this advertising dollars that we've already got going. So I totally with Rachel, this was like, I know we can make our empire bigger and then we'll get a bigger piece and they'll promote me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where Amazon is at They're They've gotten to the size now where it's going to be hard for them to increase their e-commerce market share. So they're looking outside of that. Like any big company that gets as big as Amazon, they start looking at other things, you know, 10 years from now, they'll be like installing and building wind turbines or some crazy thing, you know, um, it's just kind of the natural progression of, of big companies that start losing their focus a little bit and just try to increase, uh, the income for the shareholders more than actually focusing on their core business. I think that you're absolutely right that they're going to do that, but not because they think it's against their core business. I think that's a that's part of their core business. I mean, have you seen how much it costs to run an AWS facility? Yeah, for sure. I, I absolutely think they're going to start going upstream and trying to find cheaper <laughs> ways that's to true. do I electricity. Didn't think about that, so they might start building their own wind turbines. They're talking about building <laughs> their own graphic cards that compete with Nvidia. I heard so that's uh, definitely something they could do. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.